Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hall Auto Diagnostics. 2014 Chevy Silverado, about 180,000 miles, came in for an overheating complaint. So the customer said the needle just goes right past 210 to 3 quarters, um, and he doesn't want to blow it up, obviously. Parts cannon has been fired at this one. You know, just the basics. Got a brand new thermostat, brand new water pump. Nothing seems to help. Um, he does have a launch scanner. Scan it for codes. I don't think that has anything to do with uh, overheating right now, but he said to get it here, he had the heat inside on full blast to help it cool. And with the scanner, he commanded the cooling fans 100%. Well, he made it here, so let's see what's going on with this Chevy. So when this truck came in in the morning, I just briefly felt the radiator hoses. And I noticed that this one was warm, but the bottom one was too hot to touch. Even right now, it's hotter than the top one. That's a red flag for the thermostat, for some reason, not opening. But okay, um, if he has good heat inside, that means the water pump is doing what it should. It's pumping the coolant through. So... Could it be a defective aftermarket thermostat? It could be. I think there is a date stamp on there. So it's all one piece, this plastic housing and thermostat. It's all in one unit, so you can't really put it in backwards. But for now, let's uh, hook up the scanner, do a full health report, and test drive it, look at scan data, see what the temperature reads, and see how fast this thing overheats. If it shoots right past, 210 and keeps climbing um, we'll get the thermal camera out and see what's hot under the hood so on any vehicle that comes in before doing any test driving I always check the engine oil it's a liability thing we don't want to blow up anything and on this one I'm really happy I did because the dipstick is bone dry there might be a little bit of black sludge on the tip I mean that right there it's bone dry Ridiculous. So before even taking on a test drive, mandatory oil change. We don't know how much is in there. And if you look here, there's no oil change sticker. And it says 98% oil life remaining. <laughs> so did someone just reset the oil life reminder without changing the engine oil? Crazy. So bef before even taking on a test drive, I'm doing an oil change. So this is how much oil I drained out of the crankcase. Maybe three quarts. This sucker is supposed to hold eight quarts. That is ridiculous. <laughs> so in cases like this, I actually measure the amount of oil that came out into a spare jug. And then tell the customer that good thing he brought it over because you could have been buying a new engine very soon in a thousand miles if this was neglected. Simple as that. Let's see. Exactly three quarts. Capacity is eight. Wow. Alright, filled it up with eight quarts of mobile one 0W20, that's what this truck calls for. Start it up. Let's do an oil level check, make sure we're good. Nice and clean, right in the middle. Once it drains down, it'll be full. So, much, uh, much improved there. Now, we can get to the diagnosis of this overheating problem. All right, truck is running, warming up. Let's look at some live data. I scan it for codes. There are no codes in the engine computer. Data stream, engine cooling and heating. Let's, uh, let's try that. I want cooling fan operation, engine coolant temp. Engine coolant temperature sensor, cooling fan command. 
from engine speed. Intake air temp, let's do that. Radiator coolant temperature sensor, IAT2. Let's, uh, let's go with that. Graph it. Okay, so right now we're at 131. We started at 113. Radiator coolant temperature sensor, not sure exactly what that is. I mean, 32 degrees, probably not in not active. IET is at 100 degrees and cooling fans at 10% command. So let's drive it and see what happens. Alright, so we're still warming up 160 degrees. Gauge seems to agree. I'm just seeing if it blows hot air out of the dash. It does. It's a warm day so we're gonna turn that down. We're gonna keep the AC off. Let's see, if we turn the AC on, will the cooling fan command ramp up? We'll make sure the AC works. I didn't hear the compressor kick on. We can actually take a peek at that. Air conditioning clutch relay command, okay. Let's say on. It's not really getting that cold. It's just lukewarm, so you don't worry about the air conditioner. Cooling fans at 17%. Wonder why the Clutch relay command still on. There we go, off. Cooling fan command's coming down a little bit. 180 degrees, so moment of truth is the thermostat going to open up? Let's drive it down the road a little bit, see what happens. run just fine. Needles getting close to that middle mark. Okay, so after about three miles, temperature's still going up, 217. We're already way past the thermostat opening temperature. Cooling fan is starting to get ramped up. So the needle started to move over 210, and let's take a peek under the hood. I'm just going to feel that radiator hose. The cooling fan is spinning. Cold, cold air. Cold hose. And the lower hose. It's, it's, it's really hot up here, it's cooler down here because you know, the coolant is circulating through the water pump and through the heater core, but the thermostat is, has to be stuck closed, 100% guaranteed. Because there's no way the radiators are completely blocked. It's not even letting a little bit of coolant pass. Like the top of the thermostat is cold. So that's it, let's get it back to the shop. We're going to order a brand new OEM thermostat from Rock Auto. No motor rad garbage, no advanced auto parts, auto zone. If it's a critical engine component, OEM only. All right, so just like the customer said, we're at three quarters on the gauge. 240 on our coolant temp, 81% cooling fan command. So we'll take a picture of that. 
check engine light came on. Let's scan that, see if there's a code for overheating. Read fault code. Oh, catalyst system low efficiency. Well, I'm going to record that because they probably cleared the codes before they brought it over. Okay. Save that. And let's make sure we don't overheat coming up the lane here because that's a slow speed uphill. That's when your thermostat's stuck, you're going to be in trouble. All right, we made it up the driveway. <laughs> 248 degrees. On the coolant temp, radiator fans are at 91%. Let's see if that thermostat opened at all. Um, but it needs thermostat. All right, let's take a look with the thermal camera. What's really hot? A few days later, back to the 14 Chevy Silverado overheating issue from Rock Auto. We have a genuine thermostat for this thing. So it's plastic housing made in Mexico. Look at that. So these are kind of pricey at the dealer. It's over a hundred bucks for that. Whatever happened to $20 thermostats? But OEM only because obviously whatever they put in <laughs> it just stuck closed. That it's not very helpful. So it lives right there. It shouldn't be too hard to swap out. Let me uh, do that, and we'll take this thing on a test drive. So once you take off that giant air box, you got all kinds of working room now. Um, they're all bodies right here. Let's just wipe it out for good measure. A little courtesy for a smooth idle. There's uh, it's a little dirty. Yeah, look at all that junk in there. Thermostat's right here. So, I'm just going to put a pan under the truck and do a quick, quick, you know, off and on. Swap it over. Should be good to go. Alright, let's try to do this without losing too much coolant. Ready? Uh, motor rad. The gasket got left behind. There we go. Not too much coolant lost. Motor rad. Garbage. Can't even make a thermostat. That's their specialty. Unbelievable. Okay. Transfer the little hose. We'll transfer the big hose over to here. There, pretty slick. Clamp back in there. There we go. There, 
that's happy there. And we're still pretty full on our reservoir. Let me top that off a little bit. Take this thing in a test drive. There it is. Motorrad. Junk. Alrighty, we're warming up, looking at some live data. We're at one, almost 140, cooling fan command 10%. Let's drive it, make sure it doesn't overheat. Well, obviously the truck is fixed. We're at 201 right now. And 199, so the temperature is held steady right around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, as it should. So, that's it. What's the lesson of the day? Even non-electrical parts, aftermarket, can be absolute garbage. Motorrad is a known company. You can't even make a thermostat anymore. Embarrassing. OEM only. If it's a critical part, OEM only. I mean, engine temperature is very critical. So I had to wait for this OEM thermostat for a few days. That's the only option. And, you know, if you're DIY and you replace the thermostat and your truck's overheating, well it can't possibly be the thermostat, <laughs> right? Well it can, because you can't get good parts anymore these days. So, we're done with this truck, quick and easy, but, you know, if you keep throwing parts at it, it could have been a disaster. Proper diagnosis always wins the day. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.